Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We are here in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Turning point. I have an incredible friend. She's such a legend, Raylan. She's here with me today. We led worship yesterday morning together, which was really fun. Amazing. I got her to wake up at six in the morning (laughs) to join to join me for uh, for worship. It was incredible. She did a country music concert the night before. Um, but I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here. This and awesome. uh, and I really am. I, I love what God's done in your story. Thank I love you. how, you know, you grew up in the church. Yep. You know, you're a worshiper. The Lord opened these doors. Mm-hmm. American Idol, right? No, I was voice. The Voice. Oh. Hey, one of the TV shows. They're, they all go the same. <laughs> My wife watched you on The Voice. Oh, I, that's I, sweet. I've never watched. Well, I've maybe watched it once or twice, but she, yeah. she loved your, that's your awesome. part there. So. The Voice, was that the first time Blake was on? No, so I was on the second season of The Voice, which was, they've, they're on like season 21 now, right. which is crazy. Right. But I was on the second season, and yeah, Blake's on The Voice, so I was on okay. his team. Okay, mm-hmm. great. And uh, and then the Lord opened all these doors and country really music. He really did, yeah. Uh, you kept your faith, your roots yes. grounded, but the Lord's done a lot with you. So he really has. I'd love to talk to you about um, how you maintain that balance as a person of faith, country music. Of course, we know that country music is full of conservatives, or so we think. It really is, yeah. But there's also a lot of tension. It is. I think that's just the way the world is right, <laughs> right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think for me, um, the industry, the music industry is a lot of smoke and mirrors in a lot of right. ways. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that's kept me grounded is my family, is right. my relationship with God, and, and writing music, you know, right. writing, music for me has always been the way that I've kind of released the way that I feel. Mm-hmm. And when I started writing music, you know, I grew up, like I, he said, I grew up in the church. My family has a, a church back in Baytown, Texas, where I'm from. But these songs that I were writing, they weren't worship songs. They were they were country songs. Like they were, you know, full of grit. And they some of them were sassy, but some of them had really just a lot of heart. Right. And, um, and so I've just, through this journey, I mean, when I was on The Voice, I was, 18 years old and I did go through a period after the voice where you know I mean I was one of those kids I was at church every Sunday right every every Sunday I was at church I was a pew kid you know revival services all of it of and but then when I had to wake up and do it myself it just kind of it changed when I moved by myself and yeah. and so there was a there's about a year period when I was like trying to figure out you know what a, what a, what does all this mean to me like you know what is being doing entertainment mean to me and then I you start I love the relationship that I have with God now because it's my own you know like when you grow up as a church kid it's um you have that instilled in you but now I I want to like I've always wanted a relationship with God but it's like it's like my own does that make sense like when you figure it out for yourself and I've um it's been really it's been really incredible though because that's the one thing I love about country music and the one reason I wanted to be in country music is the values in it. Right. Is the fact that people, you know, are having a good time but they also love the Bible. They love mm-hmm. Jesus. They yeah. love they they know that it's it's true and I think that that's so important and I wouldn't be in any other genre. Right. And um, so that's, you know, and, it, and it's been hard sometimes. I mean, right. every every industry is hard, but totally. I think the the most important thing that you can do is just keep your walk with the Lord. Right. Yeah. And so when when we when we fast forwarded to 2020, the yeah. reason why we connected yes. was when we did the Let Us Worship in Outdoor in Nashville. Yeah. Um, I thought it was wild because I, I would have never imagined one that we would have so much resistance from cities and mayors and yeah. that kind of thing, governors, and which which we had a lot in Tennessee. But I I didn't know that we'd have as much resistance from the church and yes. especially the worship. Yes. Christian music, CCM industry yes. in Nashville yeah. really was like, couldn't believe that we would come in there and worship outdoors for God's mm-hmm. sakes. And, but yet I, I noticed that a lot of the country music guys were like cheering us on. Heck yeah. You know, and it, it was kind of, it was kind of shocking to me. Yes. I know you were there in, in Nashville and you posted about it and, and that's kind of when we connected. But why do you think that is? I know because I think that we've, really experienced it. I mean, definitely the church has experienced it. You know, people aren't being able to go to church. They're not right. being able to go worship. That's why you did the whole, you know, Let Us Worship tour, which is absolutely incredible. And I was just really inspired by you because it's just like, 
for me, you know, I went from doing so many dates a year on right. the road totally. to not being able to travel. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's a that's traveling is my living. Totally. Traveling is all of our livings, right? right? And so to be able to go like when I went to uh, let us worship in Nashville, I was just like, thank God I'm just in a place with people yeah. just like because this is all bigger than us right now. Right. And just singing and worshiping and and I just think that it was really cool for me to see other artists post on yeah. on your um, on your Instagram because it just showed me that we are all searching for more than what's going on, right. you know. Yeah. And um, and I think it just goes to show the backbone that we have in country music, totally. you know. Yeah. Like we're all just kind of sick of it, and right. we all right. really do like love Jesus, and we love right. we respect that, and we respect yeah. your boldness, you yeah. know. And that, and that part was really cool too. I yeah. you know a lot of my friends were like. Oh, you win! I'm so jealous. You know, like and I was like, you should have came. <laughs> well, I, I, I think for me, I mean, it was such an encouragement. I, but it also like revealed a lot to me. You know, yes. like because I felt like, you know, that the main pushback that we were getting from CCM, kind of the worship thing, where people saying, you know, how dare you do that? We can't go out on tour. Why should you be able to do that? It's not fair. Da 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 da. But then the country music guys were like, yeah, somebody's pushing the envelope. Yeah. Somebody's going, almost like cheering me on, this guy's going to help break through this yeah. crap. You know, and I, I just thought it was wild. I'm like, here's this <laughs> whole genre of people that are pumped, yes. you know, because they want somebody to bust through yes. this government restrictions and all this crap. And then these other guys in the worship music, which, which you would think... We want people to worship. Yeah, we want people to worship. You know? Yeah, 100%. Um, so, I don't know. I was so encouraged by that. And it revealed to me a lot about some of the people in country music that I didn't even know yeah. cared about worship. Yes. You know? And I think we I think we all believe in freedom, right? We all have yeah. a heart for wanting to be free and to do that. And for me, it was, it was breath of fresh air. And I know that for a lot of other country artists, they felt yeah. the same way. And it was like, and it was bold. And I think, you know, a lot of us need to be more bold in a lot yeah. of ways. How, how did the COVID era affect, change your faith, worship, the way that you view? I don't know. I was talking to, so yesterday in the lobby at one of these hotels, yeah. I was talking to a group of people. Mm -hmm. They were all liberal, like mm -hmm. far left liberal, which I'm not saying you were. No, you yeah. weren't. But it was like the COVID thing was what red pilled them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because their businesses were shut down, yeah. their way of life, and they were like, hold on one sec. And none of it really makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and they were like, hold on one sec. And they began to realize the government control, the government restrictions. Talk to me about that. Like, what what, what did you walk through in all that? Was it kind of an awakening? What did you... I, I think And I the industry, through, and how it affect the industry. For me, I definitely had a lot of, like, I think, like, the classic, you know, things that come from the enemy of, like, is this what we're meant to do? Like, what's going on? Should I go back on the road? Like, is right. it ever going to come back? Right. Like, what's what's going to come of all of this? Mm -hmm. Like, kind of thing. Um, but then, I, you know, I got to spend more time with my husband. I got to spend more time right. with my family. Yeah. Got to not be on the road all the time. And instead of seeing it in a light of, like, I got to get back out there. We got to do this. We got to conquer this. Like, of course, we got to do that. I was like, all right, I'm going to just rest. And I'm going to just... Like pray and just thank God for the season that I'm in right now. Because there's nothing I can do about this. I, you know, I'm posting what I can. I'm doing what I can. But I've never had a season of rest. And I've never been able to just be with my husband and be present. Yeah. And be with my family. Because, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. I mean, yeah. I was, when God Made Girls came out, I was on the road 250 days out of the year. I, I mean, Sheesh. I was, I've been working my butt off. And yeah. so, to be able to just like, I honestly think that God put this t 2020 in my life for a season of rest for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that's, and I, and God does things in mysterious ways. And now as, and then of course, 2021 happens and I get pregnant and I'm like, oh God, what's going on? Well, that's kind of what happens yeah. when you're off the road. Yeah, it happens when it you're off the road. Us. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, you know, got pregnant with Daisy and then I'm just like, and then now that I have it, like, and, I, and I've said this to you before, and then it was cool because I did like a residency tour in Nashville mm -hmm. at Blake Shelton's bar that he has downtown. And I almost didn't do the tour because I was like, ah, whatever. But I ended up doing it. I'm so glad I did that before um, like I had maternity leave because 
I really realized that music is what I love and I'm meant to do this. I'm meant to still write, I'm meant to put out music and I'm meant to have a voice because there's yeah. not a lot of us that are bold enough to speak about what we believe in, which is so crazy. And so, but after I had Daisy and I saw my baby girl, I was like, okay, if I, I hope that she has the courage and she will have the courage because she'll be like me and her dad to speak up and speak yeah. out. And if she sees me being nervous, what does that, what does that say to her? You know, I never want my daughter to see that. And so that's when I just kind of was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be more outspoken in my way. Mm -hmm. And cause you can't put the way that I feel for people. I love people. I'm yeah. a people person. Like I can talk to anybody and really get on, get along with really anybody. I mean, of course, like if you're, even if you're super left, I, I'm pretty sure I can find common ground with you in some way yeah. Yeah. and talk to you about something. That's yeah. the heart of Jesus in yeah. my, in my yeah. view of things. Totally. And so anyways, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy. It was bumpy, but also I think it was a, a blessing for me in some ways. So the the, I think it's amazing. Of course, the Lord opened the door. You're on the Voice, launched out. I let you know, I just finished writing this this book last year about brazen, be a voice, not an echo. Yeah. Talking about this theme of be, becoming a voice, right? God amplifying voices, yes. voices of yes. truth. So then. Was it last year, earlier last year, you sent me this song, this demo that you she were working me. on. She chose me, yeah. And, and I've, I remember hearing it and I'm just like, because the pro-life message is has been such a huge part of my life. Yeah. Like my sister, my parents adopted my sister who was planned to be an abortion. Wow. And and I didn't even know that till later in life, but mm -hmm. I just had this undergirding thing inside of me it was like um, I was 16 years old I was at a prayer meeting we started to pray for the ending of Roe v Wade and the reversal of of um, the death decree over America yeah. and I got God's heart for it not it not yeah. the political stuff it yeah, was like no this is the heart of God the shedding yeah. of innocent blood yeah. millions of babies being Million. murdered on the altar yeah. of, of convenience this is not okay praying 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 Things just got worse in my early 20s. Yeah. You know, all the legislation, things just got worse. It got worse. It got easier to have abortions and they released restrictions till you could yeah. get them later. And I'm like, this is, in the, we're praying so much and this is trending in the wrong direction. I began to lose hope. Then I felt like the Lord said, keep praying. I'm raising up voices. I'm yeah. raising up voices. Yeah. John the Baptist said in, uh, in the Bible, he, they said, who are you? Are you a prophet? Are you this? Are you this? He said, no, I'm a voice. Yeah. I'm a voice of one crying in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. So back to the voice thing. You have this song, you have this message. Why now? Why Why was this the time? Obviously we've seen the favor God's, God's had on it, but mm -hmm. let's talk about that. I, so I found out in my mid twenties, <laughs> mid twenties. Um, <laughs> so a couple years back that I started like asking questions with my mom about like my birth story. Just, you know, mm -hmm. just some questions that I had. and quickly found out that my parents got married because they got pregnant. Like that right. was really the only reason my mom got married to my dad, which is, you know, she was trying to do the right thing. And so I started asking more stories and, um, and then, you know, she told me that she almost like she had had it planned, um, to abort me. She had like everything, you know, she was headed to the appointment, everything. So she you found out this in your mid twenties. Yeah. So That's I'm insane. on, so she's on her way to her appointment to, um, you know, have an abortion and she gets a call from her friend and her friend had had a dream that she was pregnant and she said, Hey, you know, I know you're pregnant, but I just want you to know that that baby in your stomach has the call of God on its life. Come on. And that Woo. you think that, you know, this is the right thing to do, but that baby is going to be a lot of your life. And of course my mom just starts bawling her mm. eyes out and um, she decides not to do it. And, um, and my dad knew, and, and I feel so like, when I think of my dad's point of view too, it's just like, I'm sure he felt so helpless in that point. Like, you know, he's like, he was like, no, you're not doing this. Like, you know, it's okay. My dad loves kids. He's just like, when, when my, when Daisy was born, my daughter, he cries every time we FaceTime him. He's just like the most, he's a gentle giant. But, um, she ended up not doing it. And so, and it actually kind of makes sense because every time I get on a big stage, my mom is super emotional and my dad. And it's so funny because they've known about this and like all of it kind of makes sense with that. I'm like, no wonder when I was on The Voice, you were so emotional. No wonder, you know, all of these, 
all these things that have, God's opened in my life, you've been, you kind of held on or whatever. And so anyways, of course she didn't do it. And But when I found that out, it really hit me like, okay, I almost didn't exist. Wow. My husband almost didn't have a wife. My brothers and sisters almost didn't have their little sisters that they had, you know. I almost didn't have his career, you know. And that really, just that realization, realization hit me. And I've always been an advocate for the underdog. Like, that's been my... I was always the kid that hung out with the kids that nobody wanted to hang out with. I always played with the kids nobody wanted to play with at the playground. I've just always loved the underdog. And to me, the unborn are the ultimate underdogs. Right. They are, and yes. nobody fights for them. Nobody can, yeah. you know? It's And um, and so I wrote She Chose Me. And, and I wanted to write this song from a non-judgmental perspective because right. I know of, of some women that have had abortions. Right. And nobody really talks about the mental capacity that happens to these right. women. I mean, one of my friends that has she says that there's not a day that goes by that she doesn't think about that baby. Right. She's like, not every day do I cry, but I always cry when I think about them being born, like when their birthday would be. She's like, but there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about them. And so I was like, how do I write this song and make it, um, how do I write this song from a non-judgmental perspective, right. but also celebrating life? Like, how do I do that? It's kind of a crazy loophole. I was like, how do we, how do we do this? And so, um, that's why I started the chorus. Like, if it went the other way, nobody would have blamed her. Like, think right. of all the yeah, small yeah. towns. All that, you know, so that's why I started it off like that. But I, right when I released this song, to me, and I didn't know if I was going to put it on my record. And I had three dreams of, like, me having a conversation with my manager. And she's like, what songs do you want to put on the record? It's back-to-back nights. And I was like, well, Shay Chose Me definitely has to go on there, blah, blah, blah. And so I had that dream one night, and then I had it again, then I had it again. I was like, all right. Oh, my well, gosh. Well, this definitely has to be That's on the record. That's crazy. Like, yeah, and it was, it was awesome. Wow. And so then I told Carrie, uh, my manager, I said, you know, this song has to be on my record. And it was, you know, the cool thing about She Chose Me, though, is people that I didn't think would want it to be on my record wanted it to be on my record. Right. Like, God really did open doors with it. Right. And for me... It's not a it's not a song that should be controversial. It's my story. Right. You cannot take somebody's right. story Total. away from them. Hundred percent. If it's their story, it's their Total. story, and it's it's my life. Like, right. if you were against this song, then you're not a good person. Like, that's right. my view right. of it. Yeah. And so, all that being said, I decided to put it on Baytown, and right when I put it out, over ten thousand videos have been made on TikTok. More than that, wow. probably now. Of just you just scroll I mean I was weeping just seeing wow. women just choosing life choosing life choosing life wow. and it was just it was really beautiful and then you see adoptions like adoptions are the ones that get me too of like my mom almost didn't look at my family and then wow. like and then I, I recently saw one oh my god it got me so bad and it was a mom taking her daughter I mean taking her son to a uh, it was an adoptive mother taking her you know adopted son to the zoo to hang out with his birth mother and she agreed to let him see his birth mother like wow. once a year. And, and it was, and it just, she was like, I'm so glad she chose, you know, she chose him because now yeah. I have my son. And it just like, I get goosebumps wow. when I think about it. Gosh. But it's just been, a, um, and it's kind of opened this whole new thing for me. Um, and it's, I guess it's kind of put me in more of a political statement kind yeah. of place with She Chose Me. But to me, it's always been my heart. So yeah. I'm, I'm speaking more about it, which I love. Well, I think, uh, one, I think it's profoundly powerful. Two, I mean, you know, there's that verse that says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Right? Yeah. So, like, your, the fact that it's your testimony yeah. really doesn't make it political. People no. can make a political if they All want. All they want, but it's not. But even that issue is not a political issue. No, it's not. You know, and, but... We have to do a good job. This is, I tell conservatives this all the time. I tell people on the right all the time. We have to tell the story. Yeah. We are the worst at telling the story, no, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the left is always talking about Joe that can't afford this and can't do this and is way down by college debt. Like they, they are masters at telling the story. But guess what? We have a better story. Yeah. We got these kind of stories. Yeah. You know, stories about life, stories about courage, yes. stories about hope. And so I see. I see the Lord using this to empower people because there's so many people that have a story like that. Yeah. And I honestly, and I, right when I wrote it, I remember writing it and I, I've written it, I wrote it like four years ago. Like I've had yeah. it for a while. Whenever I wrote it, I was driving in my truck listening to it because that's where 
if it doesn't pass the truck test, it's not going. Yeah. And so I was driving in my truck listening to it, and right when it stopped, like, first of all, right when the chorus hit, I started bawling, and I was just thinking, this, this song's going to save a lot of life. Like, that's the first thing I thought. And it still gets to me when I think about it because I just know that it's meant to be in the world because of that, you know? And so it's been, it's been really powerful, really powerful. Wow. How do you, how do you think it, it's changed your trajectory or has it in some ways? I think it's done it in a, in a big way, yeah. honestly. I think, you know, you win some, but you lose. You, it, w w w when you win some, you lose some too. And so for me, I've lost a little bit. But I've gained so much more. So much. And two, you know, I'm I'm in this place now that I have Daisy and I'm my family's more important to me, like and I've realized that over the last two years that it's okay to not be liked by everybody. Like I'm I, and that took me a second. Like when I moved to Nashville, I was eighteen. I was kind of a, trying to please everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just like, oh, okay, like whatever, like ah yeah. I just don't care anymore. And like, and I think that you kind of got to get to that point where you just don't care. Right. And because I really don't care what people think about me. Right. You know, I know my husband loves me. I know Jesus loves me. I know I have an incredible daughter and I have an incredible family that supports me through anything. Right. And if this all went away, I'd be okay. Like, yeah. and that's where you have to get. And it's so funny when you get to that point, there's so much blessing that happens. Yeah. I was, I was telling that to a friend that's in music. I was like, when you get to the point of just, Caring, but not, you know, right. like where you, you do what you need to do. You put out the music you want to put out and then you just let it go. That's when really the blessing happens because you don't have that like, you know, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. What, 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 what is your encouragement like to people out there? Cause I mean, obviously I'm an artist too, creative. There's a lot of creatives out there. Um, <clears throat> it's easy to say, <clears throat> you know, you know, follow the, the cloud and not the crowd or whatever, yeah. all the statements, you know, uh, but, but it's another, it's, it's a more difficult thing. Letting that fear of men and letting that approval of men kind of die in you. I had to yeah. walk through that season, you yeah. know, cause I'm a, I'm a songwriter and a musician and yeah. I want people to like me. We all want people to like us, 100%. you know, but sometimes there's roads that the Lord brings you on where yep. they're inherently controversial. Yep. You know, what's your encouragement to people out there to speak the truth, even if they are creatives, my, my encouragement personally is, you know, I saw the sticker that said, have the courage to be disliked. People respect you. There is something about, you know, I, I have mad respect for somebody that sticks up for what they believe in. Right. And, and to wherever something's really hard, there's just, there's always just a blessing around the corner. And I think <coughs> just, it's just the, the best thing that I've found is community. And I think it's right. so important to have either a group text or have like, cause you're not going to find, not everybody's not going to be with you. It's, right. It just feels like everybody's against you. Right. It's like me when I post a picture and I have a hundred amazing comments, that one comment that somebody's being mean right. is the one I go check out their right, profile. Right, so like, right, right. <laughs> like it's the one one, it's the one comment. It's not the hundred that people are like, you're right, amazing. Right, you're this, right, you're that. Right. Like, that's not what gets me. It's the, it's the yeah. one that said something negative to yeah. me. And it's the same with that. Like it's, I, you know, you just can't, you have to find a community because they're going to be the ones that get you through that, that yeah. time. Yeah. And community is everything. I mean, I have a group text with some girlfriends when something pisses me off or makes me mad. I just send it out and they all give their, you know, they, they make me feel good for a second. And then they're like, Ray, okay, don't say this. You know, <laughs> we have it. And you need that. Yeah. You need that. Especially in this time. Especially with the cancel culture, the mob, yeah. the, the <clears throat> the woke narrative, all the stuff yeah. that comes against you. Yep. It, 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 there's, it's almost like a spirit of intimidation. Yes. You know, that doesn't want the truth to be known. It doesn't want the truth to get out yes. there. And so anyway, I'm just so grateful for you. Thank I'm you. thankful Thank for you, you. the and, way that you. And it's just like, and too about, about that, it's, it's just so important to just stay realizing that this is so much bigger than us. Right. This is not, red versus blue, right versus left. Right. This is like, this is a spiritual attack. Totally. It really is. Yeah. And once you see it in that view, because nothing makes sense right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think just staying really, like really close to your family, to God and to, you know, what your path should be is the most important thing that you can do yeah. right now. But, would you do me a favor and yeah. just pray for some folks out there before yes. we end? Yes, yes, I would love to. Yes, I would love that. Yes, I would love that.
I thank you, Jesus, for anybody that is watching this podcast or listening to it, God. I pray that you would just give them boldness and courage to get through any kind of temptation that they're feeling um, just in this season of cancel culture and where we're at in the world, Father. And I pray that you would just be with them. I pray that you would open doors for uh, people that are being bold, Father, and uh, bold in you, Jesus. And we just thank you for all the lives that are being touched by this podcast and being touched by you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Thanks for Thanks for having me.